Okay, this is weird. So I've got two Galaxy S21 Ultras with me here, one with the Exynos 2100 chip from the UK, and one with the Snapdragon 888 from the US. And as you guessed from the title, I want to figure out which one is better, and if we can finally get some parity between the two models. Or if, once again, those with the Exynos variant are just getting a bit screwed over. I've been making these videos for a few years now. I get the two phones, which should be the same, but then it turns out they're not, and historically the Snapdragon variant is quite a bit better. Um, but now, here we are with the S21 Ultra, and not only are my results not what I expected, but they're not even what other people are getting. I mean, I've watched Arun's excellent video on this and a few others, but my results tell me that actually these two are pretty neck and neck. Which is actually great news because you don't really want a winner in this video. These should be the same phone. They're both S21 Ultras, and I'd say that it's as close as it's ever been, although there are still some important differences. Okay, let's start with performance. And when I ran my tests and started to realize that my results were not the same as, say, Mr. Who's the Boss's, I wanted to replicate one of his tests exactly. So these two phones are set up identically, and I fired up the Antutu benchmark. And from round one, the scores are, well, pretty neck and neck. But of course, the big question here is about sustained performance. So altogether, I ran this test five times straight after each other, and if I bring up all the numbers, you can see that they trade blows throughout, and surprisingly, by the end, the Exynos is in the lead. So a pretty surprising win for the Exynos, which is not what I really expected to see, nor is it what I've seen other people talk about. So I wasn't quite sure what was going on, but I wanted to make sure there wasn't maybe something wrong with my Snapdragon version, so I actually uh, went out and bought another S20 Ultra myself and had it reshipped over here internationally as fast as I could, which uh, cost quite a bit of money, but I wanted to make sure this video was as fair and as thorough as possible. So with the two Snapdragons and the one Exynos, uh, they've all got the latest software, all set up the same. Let's do it again. Let's go through five runs of Antutu. And from what I'm looking at, there's two big takeaways. Firstly, if you look at the two Snapdragon phones, I mean, these are identical devices pretty much, yet we're getting slightly different results. Secondly, the Exynos is slightly behind throughout, but if we look at run five, it's bang on the average score of the two Snapdragons. What is consistent though, is that the Exynos chip does run hotter. It's a solid eight degrees Celsius hotter before we even start the test, and it's about 12 degrees hotter by the end. So that is a bit concerning, but so far at least, it doesn't seem to be having any major impact on the results. What's really interesting though, is that if I take my laser thermometer and then take an external reading of the two phones, the Snapdragon model is about one and a half degrees hotter. Now these are different colors. We've got the Phantom Silver versus the Phantom Black, and that could slightly skew the results. But even so, we're not seeing that big internal difference in temperature reflected on the outside and in how hot it feels to hold. But Antutu is just one test, and so after a half hour break, so they've all cooled down properly, I ran Geekbench 5, and here they're all within a percent or two of each other. Within the margin of error, really. Switching to OpenGL, which is more of a graphics test, and the Exynos is way out in front. Speaking of graphics, though, let's run the 3 Mark Wildlife test, because this is one of the latest benchmarks and should give us a good idea of the potential graphics performance. And the Exynos comes out in front by about 4%. I then run it twice more, and after the third test, while they've all dropped a couple of hundred points, the Exynos is still winning, although only by a few percent, it's not really a big difference. But there's still that big question of sustained performance, and so after running the tests and then a 20 minute wildlife stress test on all three, the scores are, well, pretty similar to before. The two Snapdragons are within a percent of each other, so again, margin of error, but the Exynos has higher best and lowest loop scores. Okay, enough benchmarks. Let's see how this translates into a real-world performance. Will you actually notice a difference in using them every day? Well, let's start with a good old-fashioned app launching test and going through a couple of games and a few lighter social apps. And I did this test three times for each phone, of course, closing all the apps between the tests. But in all three run-throughs, the Exynos was just a tiny bit quicker by about three seconds. Again, it's not something you'd really be able to notice in day-to-day -day life, but from the three times I did this, the Exynos was faster every time, even if it was only between two and four seconds. Okay, moving on, and let's see how they fare with a video export challenge. I shot a minute long 4K video on both, loaded it into Premiere Rush, added a film color filter and some text at the start and the end, and then timed the 4K30 export. 
Now my tapping of the timer is a little bit delayed, so I'm going by the video footage as I'm editing this, but the Exynos takes a hair over 2 minutes and 18 seconds versus 2 minutes 37 on the Snapdragon. And I think one of the most significant results we've seen so far. Now throughout this video I'm trying to be as thorough and as fair as possible, so running it again and the times are within milliseconds of the first run, and again the Snapdragon is 13% slower. But what about gaming? Well, I downloaded GameBench Pro, fired up a bit of Armor Mobile Ops, which is quite a demanding game, and it also supports 120Hz, and starting from the same load point on both, I played the game for 15 minutes on each phone, doing as close to identical moves as I possibly could. And at the end, if I put the results side by side, you can see the median frame rate on the Snapdragon is 115 versus 120 on the Exynos. The battery drain is exactly the same though, at minus 8% per hour, but we'll come back to this in a second but it seems to be yet another small win for the Exynos. However, raw performance aside, the ubiquity of the Snapdragon chip does give it some advantages, including developers potentially optimizing it better in their games. For example, in PUBG, you have to use the lowest smooth graphic settings to get 60 FPS, whereas on the Snapdragon, you can get 60 with the high or HDR settings. Plus you have the option of the Ultra HD, all of that then does bring you back down to 40. But either way, you're getting more graphics and more frame rate options with the Snapdragon model. So that's a lot of information to take in, but my takeaway when it comes to performance, not only have Samsung caught up to the 10 to 20% deficit we were seeing last year with the Exynos 990, but it's consistently slightly outperforming the 888 in my tests. CPU temperatures are higher on the Exynos, and in some games like PUBG, they just play better with a Snapdragon chip due to the optimizations. But if I had to say which is faster overall, from my tests at least, I've got to give it to the Exynos, which is not what I thought I'd be saying at all. And I do appreciate it's contrary to what a lot of other people are saying, but I can only share with you my results, and I've tried to be as scientific as possible, including buying additional phones uh, for this video. Hmm. So that's performance, but what about battery life? And if you're hoping this will be more clear cut, well, it isn't, unfortunately. Now you may have seen my big iPhone 12 versus Galaxy S21 rundown test from a few days ago, and in that video where I go through hours of social media, gaming, 4K camera recording, and video playback tests, in the end, the Snapdragon model lasted 22 minutes longer than the Exynos. Although given that's the difference between 9 hours and 4 minutes versus 9 hours and 26, which works out to be about a 4% difference, it's not that significant. Funnily enough though, when I ran all the benchmarks earlier, the results were the other way around, with the Exynos a couple of percent ahead of the Snapdragon, so it does seem to vary based on what apps you're using. Now I'm not sure how helpful that was, but again when it comes to battery life, previously with the Note series and even to a greater extent the uh, S20 series from last year, we were seeing the Snapdragon version last a good hour or so longer than the Exynos model, but now, well at most it's about 20 minutes and a couple of percent, but really there's not that much in it. Now last but not least, let's compare the cameras because the different chips also give us different ISPs. So even though the lenses are the same, the processing may be different. These are shot side by side, no filters or effects, and without the scene optimizer, which I found can significantly change how a photo looks, particularly the saturation and not always for the better. But there's a clear difference in the warmth between these two shots, and it's a similar story with this portrait photo of Sarah. The Snapdragon leans towards a slightly more saturated, slightly purpley hue. Although when we punch in, I am drawn to the Snapdragon model, which looks quite a bit more realistic and higher quality. Again, these are supposed to be the same phone. It's kind of crazy. Another big difference is when you zoom in. If we go through the different lenses, when we get to 30 times, the Exynos is noticeably lighter and the building in the foreground is a lot sharper. However, at the still ridiculous 100 times space zoom, I mean, they're both totally unusable, but you can see there's a lot of noise reduction happening on the Snapdragon, so it's smoother and, well, less noisy, but at the expense of some finer detail that we see on the Exynos. Now switching to low light, and actually there's very little difference between them here. This is a night mode shot and they're both sharp and have excellent dynamic range. But there is a big difference with regular non-night mode photos in low light. And like when we zoomed in, the Snapdragon's noise reduction just smooths everything out, with the Exynos being a lot noisier and grainier. Although it seems switching to night mode does even the playing field. Here's another example, first without night mode, and it does seem as if the Exynos is maybe going for a higher ISO, as it is brighter, but at the cost of far more noise. 
so I do prefer the Snapdragon's regular low light photos, but again with night mode, it's pretty much a tie. But let's switch to video, and this is being shot at 4K in very tricky lighting, and I actually had to triple check I got these in the correct order, because low light video appears to reverse what we saw with low light photos. This time the Snapdragon is a lot noisier, but we are seeing more detail, whereas the Exynos is overly softened, but with a lot less grain. So it's kind of a toss up, do you want a more detailed but greenier video, or a super noisy but more detailed one? So where does that leave us? Well, my results do seem to contradict a lot of what other people are saying uh, in other videos and online, and all I can say to that is, I don't know, honestly. I actually messaged Aaron from Mr. Who's Boss uh, to talk about these results a little bit. He didn't know what to tell me, I didn't know what to tell him, but our results are just different. And I know that we're both doing our tests as methodically and scientifically as possible, and I've even tried to replicate some of the tests he's done. I've even, as I say, bought a third phone uh, for this test. But it does show that performance in particular uh, can vary significantly between benchmarks, even between the same phone, and so that can skew conclusions. And so from my very extensive testing, and I've been doing this for years now, I have to say that I think the Exynos is slightly faster than the Snapdragon in the tests that I've run. However, I do still think the Snapdragon model just comes out ahead when it comes to the camera. But the thing is, most of this is academic and a bit of a moot point anyway, because unless you're gonna uh, buy your phone internationally and reship it, which some people do, and I have uh, for one of my phones here, so while we can argue, maybe debate about which is a couple of percent faster either way, it's really not about that. It's just trying to be able to prove that uh, one territory or region isn't really being uh, you know, left out compared to another one, which historically, for the last couple of years at least, we really have been here in the UK and Europe and wherever we got the Exynos. And I can tell you honestly that where I have switched to the Snapdragon models of the S20 and the Note 20 last year because, well frankly, I was not happy with the Exynos 990, this year I'm actually happy to stick with the Exynos S21 Ultra. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I did put a lot of work into it, so, uh, well, hopefully it was useful. If you do want to see more from me, then hit the subscribe button below and let me know your thoughts about the S21 Ultra and also this Snapdragon versus Exynos debate in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.